Hey guys, Flay here. Today I'll be making an Ensingas Aria Extreme Guide, so let's get right into it. Do know that I am using my clear POV for this, and it is more like a walkthrough type of guide. The first mechanic that the boss is going to be casting is Elegeia's Unforgotten. This is basically a raid wide AoE, make sure you heal and mitigate through this. As soon as he finishes casting this, you will see that there is this orange planet that spawned. Do note that this can be a blue one or it can be this orange one. What the orange one does is basically just like normal mode, there is a slow moving one and a fast moving one coming to crash into it. As soon as this fast moving one is going to crash into it, it is going to cleave this side of the arena. There is another thing to pay to attention here. There is this head in the middle and it is facing towards one side which you can see towards the one side. This basically means that as soon as this first planet crushes here, it is going to cleave this side and this head is going to cleave the other side. That means the southeast side of the arena is safe. So here there will be another raid white AoE just after it, but this time it is going to cause the blue planets to spawn. The blue planets basically, they cause a knockback. So you have to locate the slow moving one and the fast moving one. The slow moving one is around here, so the knockback is going to be around here. Also pay attention to the head that spawned right here, it is facing the other side. So here we get knockback and then the boss is going to be casting Catastere Small. So here the boss is going to spawn 4 sets of towers to the right side and 4 sets of towers to the left side. What we basically did is we put all the DPSs on the right side, so D1, D2, D3 and D4, and then the tanks, main tank, off tank and the healers right here. Do it in however you please, it doesn't really matter, but make sure all the DPSs go towards one side and the tanks and healers go to another side because there will be a tether mechanic called Creep of Despair coming up. This will tether every DPS to one tank and healer. We make the DPS run to the right side and the tanks and healers run to the left side. These tethers need to be broken otherwise they are going to cause damage over time and apply vulnerability ups to your character. So here as soon as the tethers break, you are going to take the towers. But at the same time, the boss is going to cast Elenkos. So just like normal mode, it is going to be the sides that is unsafe or the middle that is unsafe. Here you can't see anything coming out of the mouth of the boss, so this means that the middle is safe. Here you can see the wings is raised, so it means that the sides is not safe as you can see here. It cleaves the sides of the arena. Now the next uh, mechanic is Telos, this is another raid wide AoE, make sure you heal through this. Right after this, the boss is going to cast Hubris, this is a tank buster, make sure that your tanks are away from the group. Now important thing here, you have to make sure that your tanks are number 1 and number 2 on the aggro list, if not, the second person on the aggro list is going to get the tank buster. So here, just make sure that your tanks pop your mitigations and heal through this. After this, the boss is going to cost another red white AoE. Now there is the blue planet that spawn again and there is this head facing the southeast side. So we are basically going to locate where to get knockback, basically to the northern side is going to be safe. So here we get knockback to the northern side but at the same time the boss is going to cast Aeronea. This basically puts two stack markers on your healers and you have to go into light party groups to take this damage. So here we have our main tank, our D1, our T3 and the healer 1 is going to go to the left side and then the healer 2 and the other group is going to the right side. 
After this, the boss is basically going to cost Fatalism. Now here you have to locate which of the two planets get separated first. They will have both planets spawn from these locations, the slow moving one and the fast moving one. You have to locate which one basically spawns first. So as you can see here, this one is spawned first and the other one hasn't spawned yet. So it means that this one will go off first and then the other one will go off later. We get knocked back here. Do note that this could be the orange as well, so you have to dodge accordingly. And then you are going to dodge the second one as well. At the same time, the boss is casting Elenkos again. So this basically means that either the middle is safe or the sides is safe. Here, the middle is safe again. The boss cleaves the sides right here. Now the boss is going to cast Twin Songs Apor Hoya. Now there will be 5 heads that spawn on the arena right here. You have to locate where the safe spot would be. So here you can see that this middle head is facing to the right side. This means that 1 and 2 is unsafe. 4 and 3 is going to be the safe side. One of them will be safe. So just move to there. You have time, make sure you move on the safe spot. So here as you can see, the boss is going to cast Aborhola Unforgotten and this part is going to get cleaved and this is a safe spot. Now this always goes clockwise, so if it started at 3 here, it's going to go from 3 to 4 and then into 1. If it started like 2 for example, it would be 2, 3 and then into 4. As you can see here, 3 goes off, and then we move towards 4, and then we are going to be moving towards 1. You just have to look at the first 3 safe spot to determine the final safe spot here. So here, this goes off again, but now you will see different rings on each of these. What it basically means is, as you can see here, this middle one is the most important to locate first. The middle one is facing the left side. If there is one ring onto it, it means that it is going to stay on the left side. This basically means that the safe spots are going to be either 2 or 1. In such cases, the safe spot would have been at 1. Now. Why is the safe spot as 1? The reason is we started at 3 into 4 into 1. Now if the boss basically means that there is 2 rings, it is going to rotate anti-clockwise one time. Just like in the video, it has 2 rings, it basically means that this side posing to the left is going to face downwards. This basically means either the 4 side is safe or the 1 side is safe. If there is 3 rings onto the middle one, it is basically going to do 180 degrees from where it is facing. So in such case, if it was 3, instead of facing to the left, the final one would have been to the right. Then it would mean that 4 and 3 would be safe. So you have to locate which one is going to be safe here. As you can see here, these two on the south side is not safe, so 3 and 2 is not safe. Now you have to locate which of the ones is going to be the safe one, the 4 or the number 3. Now this fourth one was not the number 1. This one basically means which of the safe spot AOEs it was. The first one was number 3, so there is going to be a safe spot here but also since the boss is going to be cleaving here, I mean the head this spot is not going to be safe. So this one was not the first, so automatically this first ring is not the safe spot. This one could have been safe and this one could have been safe. The one here is a safe spot because it has three rings and it was the third one that we went onto. As you can see here, this goes off and at the same time the boss is going to cast Elenkos but we are going to have the light party stacks again. So here 
we are going to go to the sides as the middle is not safe as you can see here the boss is basically casting something from her mouth now there is another set of tank busters and after this the boss is going to be casting despair on forgotten now for this mechanic there is some sets of things that you need to know here there will be either flares there is going to be stack marker or there is going to be spreads on everyone or there will be round donut aoe's that are basically dynamos just like nail as you can see here i have the stack marker those are the ones have the flares and these ones are basically going to do a dynamo into which the middle is safe what you have to do here is for the first set it doesn't matter what you get just make sure that into the middle one you have your stack marker and these dynamos stack tightly as you can see here these flares go off the dynamos goes off and the stack marker goes off as well. Make sure you heal and mitigate stroses. There will be the second set of despair and forgotten again. This time, once again, there is a different set of markers. This time I got the flare, so I'm going to be moving away from the group. Now, at the same time, after the second one goes off, the boss is going to be casting one Elenkos. This one was basically the sides unsafe. So I move into the middle. Make sure to always look at the boss here. Here on the first day, I wasn't looking at the boss. I just followed everyone. But you have to make sure that you continuously just look at the boss. And then after this, there is going to be the third despair unforgotten. This one is going to have a spread onto everyone. Make sure everyone spreads accordingly. Now, right after this, you will see that this boss caused theological fatalism. You are going to have these rings onto your characters. So there is the one ring, the two ring and the three ring. The three rings basically means the first mechanic you got. The second ring basically means the second mechanic you got. While the first ring basically means the last mechanic you got out of the three previous mechanics. Now here you will see I did a mistake because I had the stack marker first but I went away because I thought that I had the flare. So here as you can see as I had this one on the third so I basically got killed here. After that the boss is going to cost Telomania. This is a multi-hitting raid wide AoE. Make sure you heal and mitigate through this. After she finishes hitting three times, there is going to be another raid wide which is going to apply a bleed. Make sure you shield and mitigate through this. Once this is done, the boss is going to be casting N songs up or Hoya. Now there will be many heads that spawn onto the arena. To dodge the first one, you have to look upwards to the boss. Here, I followed my teammates on the first clear. I wasn't sure quite where to go on the first one. So, here, there will be little bubbles that come onto the arena. And there will be one side that does not have a bubble. Make sure to look at the boss up here. You will see that there are these bubbles that coming up here, as you can see here. It was one. So here we are going to run away. Because there was no bubble towards this side. Now here I'm going to do a mistake because I thought that there was no bubble going through the heads here and I went towards one. This only applies a vol up with minimal damage so make sure you don't stand on all both of these aoe's just standing on one of them is still fine you will take a damage fallen up and you're going to get hit for a bit of damage after that just keep on locating where 
these uh, circles basically go off the head that does not have a circle going towards it is going to have the safe spot as you saw here there was no circle these circle bubbles going towards the other side so here just as after i got hit you will notice that there is none of these bubbles going around here so this means that this is a safe spot after this the boss is going to cast elencos once again and it is going to be either the middle safe or the side safe so here the middle was safe again the boss is going to cast telos again which is another red white aoe Now there is another set of tank busters. Make sure you heal and mitigate through this. Do know that the DPS check is extremely lenient, so you have plenty of time. Make sure you play safe here. So there is going to be the Elegia Unforgotten, another raid wide. Heal and mitigate through this. And then there is the mechanics, just like at the beginning of the fight again. So here it will be either a blue planet or an orange planet that spawned. So here it is the orange planet, so we are going to move away from it. At the same time, there will be the Aeronia cast, which is our light party stacks. So here the boss is going to be casting Fatalism one more time. But now, however, there are going to be four of them. So just like before, locate which one has two planets spawned from them first. So as you can see here, there are the orange planets that spawn from this one. This basically means we have to go directly opposite from it to dodge this. The second one gets separated here, and we dodge the first slice. And then there is a second one that goes off, we go directly opposite from it, and then the blue ones come up. Now do note that this could be into the reverse mana as well, it could be the blue ones first into the orange one. So here we locate where the third one is, we dodge it and get knocked back, and here we get knocked back to the fourth one and at the same time there is our towers that come off. Make sure to dodge the alien cost that is coming up as well. As you can see here it will be either the middle safe or the side safe. Since the boss has the mouth glowing here, the middle is unsafe, so we are going to stand to the sides. As you can see here, someone died and they did not stand onto the tower. This basically caused us to get vulns up and we took damage from it. After this, there is the Telomania cost, the huge raid wide. Make sure to heal through this and heavy mitigate this. Now, this is almost the end of all mechanics of this fight. It is going to be a repeat of all mechanics from here on. The next mechanic is going to be the five head that spawn again. So as you can see here, the boss cast twin songs upper Hoya and the five head basically spawns. Now here, this head is facing the south side. This basically means that the four and one side is going to be safe. So here, as you can see, there is also the two spot that is safe. But since this head is facing south, this spot is unsafe. So we go to four. From here on, we dodge clockwise. So from four to one, two, two. We let the mechanics go off. Do know that the DPS check is very lenient. So make sure to play safe and go for the clear here. Now here, this head is facing the north side. And we have to now check how many rings it has. So just like before, it has two rings. This basically means that the northern side is going to be rotating anti-clockwise towards the west side. Now, where were the safe spots? They were at 4, they were at 1, and they were at 2. There is one ring here. This means that 4 is still a safe spot. But since this is going to be rotating anti-clockwise one time towards the west side, it is going to cleave here, so the fourth safe spot automatically becomes unsafe. This one also has one ring, however, it is not the safe spot as it was not the first spot that went off. So as you can see here, 
this automatically makes the third spot that is here that has three rings safe. So here, as you can see, this cleave goes off to the left and all of these get cleaved. And here we have the boss costing and as a set of elencos, basically the sides would have been saved, but here I LB'd and the fight ended. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you and I'll see you guys next time.